Isn't it kind of embarrassing if you have a patient who has an artificial aortic valve and you just don't know? And then you make the diagnosis of aortic stenosis simply because he has normally elevated gradients in the setting of an aortic prosthetic valve? Well, you should have the referring information, no question. But in reality, at least that's my experience, we don't always get that information. So we have to recognize prosthetic valves with echocardiography, at least those valves which we can recognize. This will be the issue and the topic of the following chapter. First, here is a tilting disc valve. Remember, we only have one disc, which is asymmetrically positioned. We have two orifices, one here, which is smaller, and another one, which is larger. Here is the corresponding echo of a patient who has such a metronic hall valve. We can first of all note that there is a lot of shadowing of the left atrium, which is typical for mechanical valves and we can only see one disc. This might be difficult to visualize, so you have to rotate the transducer until you really see this one disc open and close nicely. Here's another patient, also with a tilting disc valve, this time a parasternal long axis view. Again, you can see that there's only one disc which opens and closes. You can also see the shadowing of the mechanical prosthesis down here. Now let's turn to the bileaflet mechanical valves. Remember we have two leaflets and this is also nicely visible in the echo in the four chamber view. You can see how both leaflets open and close. As a matter of fact they often don't open and close exactly at the same time. This is due to first of all gravity and also to the flow, the different flow and the different hemodynamics in the region of the prosthesis. What we also see is, again, the shadowing of the valve, and in particular, we see those two little dots. Sometimes we don't really see the entire leaflets, but only these two dots, especially in the open position. So remember this pattern, and remember to also rotate the transducer around the mitral valve until you really see those two little leaflets. It is not always possible to really delineate the two leaflets from a transthoracic approach. From a transesophageal approach, it is much easier. Here is an example of a TE study where we can nicely see again the opening and closure of a bileaflet valve. The best way, however, to really visualize the valve is, of course, fluoroscopy. But we'll talk about the value of fluoroscopy a bit later. It was actually quite difficult to find an example of a cage ball prosthesis simply because these valves are not implanted anymore and this patient was implanted over 35 years ago. The typical finding is that of a valve which reaches fairly far into the left ventricle. This is the cage. And then we see a ball which moves back and forth within this cage, but we don't see the entire ball, but only the upper parts of it, where the reflection of the ultrasound beam is. So this is a typical cage ball valve in 2D. And here is the same valve now with color Doppler. The typical finding here is that we have flow around the ball, which is usually of fairly high velocity, so we have aliasing. Probably the best way of assessing the opening and closing motion of such ball cage valves is with the help of M-mode. You just put the M-mode ray from the apical position right through the valve, and then with the help of the ECG you can delineate systole and diastole. So this would be systole, and this here is very nicely visible, the opening position of the ball, while this here is the closing position or the closed position of the ball. So you can see it move back and forth very nicely throughout the cardiac cycle. Here's another prosthetic mitral valve, however this time not a mechanical but a biological valve. This is a stented valve, you can see one strut here, the other strut is seen here. The third strut is out of the field of view or out of plane so we do not see it. And we see that there is tissue in between these two struts. Note that the struts protrude into the left ventricle and also that we do not see any shadowing of the left atrium. Now let's turn to prosthetic valves in the aortic position. 
In general, it's quite easy to differentiate between biological and mechanical valves. But it's very difficult to say which mechanical valve we actually have. This is an example of a duramedics, so a bileaflet mechanical valve in the aortic position as seen from a parasternal long axis view. All you can see here is a lot of shadowing, but those shadows also obscure the view to the prosthetic valve itself, so we cannot really see the leaflets. What sometimes can be done is you can use a short axis view, and with this view we can then kind of appreciate or assume that there are two leaflets. In general I would say it depends very much on the image quality if you can really delineate the type of prosthetic valve. Here's an example of a patient who has a very good image quality and here you not only see that we have two leaflets so that we know that it's a bileaflet valve but we can even see the sewing ring. If you're not sure if it is a mechanical or a biological valve use the continuous wave Doppler signal. The typical finding in mechanical prosthesis is that of very sharp echoes right at the beginning and the end of systolic flow. So these sharp echoes are very indicative of a mechanical valve. However, you cannot distinguish between a bileaflet and a tilting disc valve, for example. And here's another trick. Use M-mode. In patients who have mechanical valves, you will see repetitive echoes during systole which marks the opening of the prosthetic valve. In patients who have a biological valve, you will see the typical box that you also see in a normal aortic valve. A composite graft is characterized by a mechanical prosthesis with the typical shadowing and the dacron structure of the ascending aorta. The aortic root is usually very thick and you can kind of appreciate the bright echoes and the zigzag structure here of the wall of the tube graft. Now this is certainly a beautiful example of such a tube graft. In reality, to tell you the truth, it's very difficult to really see the tube part of the graft. We can easily miss it. Therefore, we have to rely on the correct referral diagnosis and referral information as to what has been operated. This is another biological aortic valve, which you will be bound to see more and more frequently. The so-called core valve. It is a valve and stent kind of a valve, where we have metallic structures, the stent, and within the stent we see the tissue of the valve. The typical feature of this valve is that it has a fairly long stent which protrudes fairly far into the LVOT all the way to the base of the mitral valve leaflet. So this is not an abnormally positioned valve, but the typical feature as you would see it in a five chamber view. Note that you can appreciate the biological tissue right in here and the typical wireframe structure of a strand here in the LVOT. The other type of valve which is currently being implanted via the transfemoral approach is the so-called Edwards Sapiens valve. It looks very similar, the only difference is the stent is not so long, so it looks more like a normal biological valve. Here's such an example. We have the stent here in this region. Very often we have fairly echogenic material here on the top and the bottom which is the residual calcified aortic valve. And in between we have the biological tissue again. Here's a question for you. Does the patient have a prosthetic valve? Well, there is no metallic substance here. We don't have any shadowing here. But the answer is yes, it is a prosthetic valve, a stentless biological valve. We do not see the struts because there are no struts. What do we learn? Well, we learn that it is very difficult to actually see or detect such stentless valves. The only thing we sometimes can see are three little dots here right in the commissural region of the cusps and sometimes an aortic root which appears to be a bit thicker than normal. This also holds true for auto and homografts. Here's such an example of a patient with a homograft, which is just partially calcified but still opening quite nicely. Now, this could just as well be a sclerotic normal aortic valve. And here's an example of a patient who had a homograft implantation following endocarditis of the aortic valve. The only thing we see here is that the valve is a bit thickened maybe and that we have 
a thickened intervalvular fibrosa and aortic root, which is due to the surgical technique which was used. This patient also had perforation into the left atrium from the LVOT, and this was covered with a pericardial patch. So in general, very difficult to really detect and to make the diagnosis of a homograft if you do not have the information. So you saw the superb image quality that we get with modern echo machines gives us a lot of morphologic information about prosthetic valves. But not only morphologic information, but also functional information. Up front, I would like to show you the typical flow profiles of the various prosthetic valves. First, the bileaflet valves. Remember, we have three openings, two large openings and a small openings. Therefore, the inflow will show three jets. When the bileaflet valve closes, we have two different types of physiologic regurgitation. The first is the so-called closing volume. In other words, at the moment the bileaflets close, a bit of blood is pushed backwards. And then we have a bit of regurgitation at the rim or at the hinges of the leaflets. The flow profile for tilting disc valves looks a bit different. Since we have two openings, we only have two jets, a larger and a smaller one. And we also see physiologic regurgitation at the rim of the prosthesis. A special type of tilting disc valve is the Metronic Hall valve, which has a hole actually in the middle. Therefore, we have a fairly large jet passing right through the prosthetic valve, which sometimes can lead to the false interpretation and to the belief that the patient has some form of significant regurgitation. So you will find some form of leakage in every mechanical valve. Why? Well, actually, we want the valves to leak because it is said that it prevents the formation of thrombi. Okay, now you learned which type of artificial valves are available and what their normal flow profile is. Now it's time to discuss how we can determine with the help of echocardiography if these valves actually function normally. From my experience, one of the most commonly made mistakes is the fact that Investigators don't look at the morphology of the valve. This is very important, but not only the valve itself, but also the surrounding, the ring, and the heart chambers. Here's a beautiful example of a patient who has a very, very large atrium. This is also very important information as to the function of the valve and also to other cofactors which may play a role in the management of these patients. Of course, we also look at the gradients and the color Doppler. How to perform and interpret Doppler information will be shown in the following demonstration. And finally, one other thing which I almost forgot to mention, don't forget the systolic pulmonary artery pressure, which is very important and is also an integral part of examining patients with prosthetic valves. Stop here. This is a long chapter with a lot of information. It's better for you to make a short break. It's time for tea. At least that's what I'm having.